watching the People's Channel, don't you know? We're all about you and everything you want to talk about, but we call ourselves Breakfast with Stephen and Anne. Yes, that's right. That's how we're known. Uh, and we're live right across the country, on your TV, on your radio, and online. Get the GB News app. You can take us with you wherever you go. Shall we take a look at today's front pages? The Guardian says Tory MP Neil Parrish faces an inquiry over the claims that he watched pornography in the House of Commons chamber. Uh, Tory MPs are urging Neil Parrish to quit now. They fear he'll damage the party in the local elections. That's on the front of the Times. The Mail says police have been told to investigate Labour's lies over the Beergate party. Uh, the paper reports that cabinet ministers have now joined calls for a new probe into the so-called scandal engulfing Keir Starmer and Angela Rayner. OK, let's chat through some of those there with broadcaster Pete Price and anthropologist Mariana Hotter. Morning, morning, morning. Good morning. morning. Um, Express Marianne and the cost of living. They've got a new survey out, a new poll, and cost of living is very top of the agenda. Absolutely, and um, entirely understandably. So, obviously, we've got the local elections coming up. Um, you know, people are canvassing, knocking on doors. You're getting all those leaflets through your doors and whatnot. Oh, it's not stop that. Well, I guess that's mad. good, isn't well, it? You're I supposed just, to read them. I've only had one leaflet. Oh, the I, cream party, one leaflet. Oh, I get, I get loads. I just think, what a waste of paper. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Awful. Can't <laughs> Google it. Well, you can. Are you going to? Do you think anything oh, okay. on one of those bits of paper would change your mind about who to vote for? Do you know what? So I've got a postal vote, and um, I, I actually sat and read their little leaflets, and genuinely made a decision. Really? I kind of thought, oh, maybe it's this one or maybe it's this one. And uh, went for the one who's I thought, had written an, a better leaflet. Right. Oh, well, there you go. Well, you're going for the better layout artist, then, are you? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> content. Yeah, content. 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 Design. Yeah. Um, anyway, so the Express has done a survey um, <laughs> about what people think are the most important issues so, um, there's, there's, I mean, everyone loves a survey, doesn't it? Because it sort of boils down what the nation thinks, mm, assuming yes. that the survey is, you know, representative. Um, so, key topics of the day, cost of living crisis, 72% of people. I mean, it's looming large. And it yeah. hasn't even, like, let's be honest, those energy price hikes only came in at the start of this month. So, yes. it's the, yeah. the, hasn't the, even hit the screw yet. hasn't even turned yet. NHS capacity... Bear in mind, we're going into summer, so to some extent that seasonal impact is going to be less. But again, the autumn looks a bit grim already, doesn't it? The uh, economy, the Ukraine war, how we're going to care for our elderly and pay for that. Um, freedom of speech, randomly. 53% of people are worried about freedom of speech. Oh, well, that's interesting, though, isn't it? It's interesting. People are people are feeling that they need to be able to air their views. I couldn't agree with you more. I think freedom of speech has gone out of the window mm. and I now don't do a phone-in anymore because I can't. You have to think of every word that comes out of your head. We've nearly had rows back there, just getting the paper story sorted. I have good, to speak my mind. Well, no, for That'd 50 years. No, for 50 <laughs> years I have spoke about freedom of speech without crossing the line, and now you don't even know where the line is anymore. No. But I, I think it's it's right to be mindful of what we say and question those assumptions. You know, some of the line, you, it, all it takes is to watch one of those old TV shows that everyone thought was hilarious 15 years ago, and you watch it now and you're jaws on the floor going, wait, hang on a minute, there's jokes about people of colour, there's jokes about women, there's jokes about all sorts of things that just wouldn't be acceptable now, and rightly so. Don't make a joke about someone in a wheelchair. In what world is that funny? Um, and the, I mean, to be fair, you guys are making jokes about mother-in-laws. I don't think that's funny either. No, yeah, uh, we tell you. No, it's outrageous. Puffing. Well, it's misogynistic, isn't it? It's just. See, oh, you're wrong isn't... there. You just said puff. You can't oh, say no, puff. No. Puffing and puffing. <laughs> oh no! I'll be getting. I'll be getting, I'll be getting, can <laughs> anyway, getting cancelled. So uh, yeah, that's not go. the same as freedom of speech. No, it's not. But anyway, oh. um, it's very interesting that express yeah. readers feel that. That's under threat, obviously, in some but way. You know everyone's having a go about the cost of living, and rightly so, rightly so, but we have been through an unbelievable pandemic which has taken chunks of money and altered everything, and people are jumping in and putting their prices up all the time in every walk of life because they can.
down now because of the pandemic and also because they need to. Yeah. So, you know, they're always blaming a government, whichever government's in, they're always blaming it. But, you know, you're not going to stop companies putting prices up. No. What I think it is, and I think the reason that I blame the government is because at that point, you've got these market economics changing prices. You know, we've got Brexit, we've got um, international supply chains being um, disrupted because of the pandemic, because of war in Ukraine, all the rest of it. But that's where you need the government and good financial policies to balance the, the impact on, on, on us. You know, well, there's the, an awful the, lot to balance. Economy. There's an awful lot to balance there right is, now. But, it's, like, but how, it's all well and good sort of saying... Um, what, do, what, what I would ask you then on that front is what does that mean? How do you balance the? How do you balance that to give people more money in their pocket? So you don't prioritise trying to bring down uh, the the UK national debt. You go, you know, we save up. We have these robust policies for the rainy day. Crikey, folks, it is raining right now. So you spend. You don't raise things like national insurance, but, which hit everybody, regardless you of whether the, you're earning seven fifty an hour or when you look, seventy pounds. But when you look at the things like the national debt, which is all dull and boring for most of us to even try and think about. We're spending billions of pounds every week on servicing that debt. So you want to bring it down in order to then have more money in your pocket. But do you want that to be brought down by removing access to families for support? Do you want to bring it down by making people queue up for food banks? Do you want to bring it down by saying, sorry, but, your elderly mother yeah, but, is going to get one 15-minute visit a, a week because... Otherwise, but we'd have not, to actually raise but it's taxes. But it's not a direct correlation between... It's not as simple well, as is. that, is it? I think, to some extent... I mean, unless you really want to get into the nitty-gritty and become, you know, the, the, the head of the Bank of England, yes, it is. You choose the political party who is going to represent your interests. And I find it hilarious. I was saying to Pete the other um, just earlier, I, d I don't understand how we are in a, a world, some kind of strange parallel universe... Where someone who is earning the minimum wage in one of those northern cities, Bolton, pick Bolton for example, are saying, oh yeah, Boris Johnson, Jacob Rees Mogg, all that lot, yeah, they're on my side, they're the people who care about what matters to me. What world do we live in? You mentioned that these, well, yeah. these people who are leading our government now have the support of the British public. It, Baffles me. You mentioned, and it has to you, be mentioned said, food, you mentioned food. You mentioned food banks. The problem now is food banks are struggling because people are now hanging on to what they've got and are not putting in to food banks. Charities are struggling, mm. but this is an awful lot to do with the pandemic. I because, know, but the know, an awful lot to do with the do pandemic. Do something about it. Don't you think well, they yeah, will? but the money doesn't grow on trees. Come, you can't just pluck it. Don't you nowhere. think they will come a general election for, through sheer political expediency? They will do something to make us feel warm and cuddly just before a general election. Well, maybe, but I don't think lots of families can wait that long because no. people are s really suffering, really struggling. Right. And the bottom line is those older people who are looking at the last few years of their life, those kids who are coming in and living in real poverty, it changes their life chances. Scrap all the green levies, then. No. Oh, but Keep them because that is what ensures a better future for those kids. Maybe so what's relative in the economy. But maybe what you should do is actually tax those who can afford it, people with massive landed assets. They don't get an inheritance tax. The things where people actually no, have... Inheritance tax. In the Why should... Right, I'm towards the end of my life. I've got a few bob and I've earned every penny and I've paid tax every day of my life. Why should I pay death duties? Give me one reason why I should pay death duties. Because you care about the next generation. No, I've cared about the okay, next... Well, gen I've cared about the next generation by paying my tax. By it. paying my tax. I pay my tax every single week and right through the pandemic. And I was one of the five and a half half million people that got nothing from the government. Nobody gave me that for two years. Why should I pay death duties? It makes me so angry that you just hit a real nerve with me oh, there. Clearly. Then go and live on a rock. Because if you're part of society... But I'm giving! You're, you're I'm, giving for, for, I'm 76. I've given for 76 years. Yeah. I've paid tax you'll all my life. Attack. You'll have a heart attack if you carry on. <laughs> no, no, well, okay. then, no, I'll pay death duties yeah, no, exactly. and save the country. I don't want I you to, to do say, it I mean, here in the studio. In, inheritance tax does seem... I mean, I know that some something has to be paid, but to try and up it and all those... I mean, it, it just... It's like paying tax... You do pay tax on it. You pay tax on tax oh, on tax yes. on tax. Yeah. 
wealth creates more wealth than not. So if you've got money, it makes money. If you haven't got any money, you're screwed. Mm. Pete, your generation, and I'm, I'm not saying it's your no. fault, and I think it's a wonderful thing, you grew up with a free NHS. You grew up with an educational system that mostly worked. You grew up with secure employment. You grew up with a lot of people in your generation with a pension that you could rely on. You've benefited from triple lock so that things like state pensions have been protected, whereas benefits for people who are in working age right. get nothing. Yeah, but well, everything well, you just said, I've paid into. Yeah. I've paid I into the NHS, have. I've paid into my... I but have so had... a 22-year-old who's working hard and paying their taxes, but they're getting much less out of the system. And you mean the ones who are out drinking all the time and partying because they don't put money away in a pension? They don't put oh, money in away in a pension. They don't put oh, money away on, in a pension. On that note, I did, I did without. Calm down, everybody, we've, we've, we've got to leave it there for now. <laughs> we may come back to you, though.